Hi, I'm Conrad Houghton, and this is lecture six in the uh, combinatorics and probability section of Mathematics for Computer Science A. In this lecture, I give two quick examples of calculation and conditional probability. Uh, for the first example, uh, consider this picture. It's a picture of a silver strand, uh, two of those my kids, one isn't, um, although I have three children, only two of them appear there. Uh, the silver strand is a beach uh, near Galway, uh, which is again near where I grew up. Uh, Galway is on the north coast of Galway Bay. If you look across the bay, what you can see is Clare. And so these uh, hills in the background are the, are the Clare Hills, part of the uplands known as uh, the Burren, uh, famous as a, a, a limestone uh, landscape. Uh, you can see uh, the, the Clare Hills from uh, much of the, the, the coast near Galway. So um, where I'm actually from, Aramore, if you walk along the coast there, which is called Renville, you can also see the same hills. And they almost always have this uh, sort of grey or bluey grey appearance. But once when I was uh, younger, I was walking there with, with, uh, with my father, and a, a farmer came the other way, and it being a country area, uh, when we passed the farmer, we stopped to briefly talk to him, and he told us this following fact. He said that if you can uh, see the hills clearly, and by that he meant if you can see fields and houses on the hills, which of course you can't at all here, um, but when the hills look green, uh, when they're, they're clearly visible, when uh, uh, houses and fields are visible, well, then it's going to rain within 24 hours. And so uh, I, I'm not really sure if that's true. I've never really checked it, although I, I nonetheless believe it. And whenever I'm home and I can see the hills clearly, uh, I, I expect rain. What we're going to do now is with some made up probabilities, uh, calculate those conditional probabilities, the conditional probability that it's going to rain if the hills are clear. OK, so uh, let's start off by writing at some sort of probability table. The idea would be that we're pretending uh, these are figures that have been compiled uh, by the meteorology office or whatever, or by local people keeping records, uh, but of course they're completely made up. So let's say uh, this is rainy and this is dry, uh, this is clear, referring to uh, the state of the Clare Hills, and this is unclear, and rainy, that's referring to raining uh, within um, 24 hours. And so uh, the event of it being clear and rainy, let's say, has been measured as a half, the event of it being uh, rainy and unclear has been measured at a quarter the event of it being dry and clear a sixteenth the event of it being dry and unclear uh, three over sixteen uh, or, or you could write the table like this just as a list um, although later on we'll see how useful these tables are so we could have uh, rainy and clear is a half rainy and unclear uh, is a quarter uh, rainy and sorry dry and clear, uh, dry and clear is a sixteenth, uh, dry and um, unclear is a three sixteenths. Okay, so those are the you know, sort of four outcomes that are possible. And uh, the four outcomes, uh, e each of them is labeled by uh, two letters giving a kind of description. Um, again, uh, later on, uh, we'll talk about how you can naturally compose things that you know, are labeled by pairs and you can see how that might be the case. But for now, we just have four outcomes, each labeled by um, uh, two letters. And now we want to look at some events. So the obvious events are that it's rainy. So the event of it being rainy is composed of rainy and clear, one, the at outcome, and the outcome of it being rainy and unclear. And the probability of R is just the sum of the probability of the two outcomes, you know, as, as we discussed before. And so that's equal to a half uh, plus a quarter, and so that's equal to three quarters. And so the probability that it will rain within 24 hours in Galway is three quarters. Uh, Galway is pretty rainy. It's very rainy. I think uh, three quarters is, is understating the actual case. Let's see the probability of it being clear. Well, that's... Uh, oh, sorry. Let's make the event of it being clear. So the event of it being clear is made up of rainy and clear and um, uh, dry and clear. Uh, and so the probability of it being clear is just the sum of those two probabilities. Um, so that's a half uh, plus a sixteenth, uh, which is equal to nine over sixteen. Okay, so we just made two events, and then we've worked out the probability in the normal way. Uh, so let me just copy these over. The probability of it raining is three over four. The probability of it being clear uh, is nine over sixteen. Uh, what about the intersection? Well, uh, rainy intersection clear. Um, the only point that's in rainy and uh, clear is actually the point called RC, rainy clear. Uh, and so the probability of rainy uh, and clear is 
uh, the probability uh, we attributed to this outcome, rain and clear, in our probability table, uh, and that was actually a half. You'll have to take my word for that because it was on the other page. And what we're interested in is um, the probability associated with the the uh, the farmer's um, the farmer's tail, the tail that when you can see the hills clearly, when you can see the fields in the hills and the dry stone walls, uh, then it will rain. And according to us now, the probability that it will rain, given that it's clear, well, it's the probability that it will rain and it's clear, uh, divided by the probability that it's clear. And we have figures for all of these things. The probability that it rains and it's clear is um, a half. The probability of it being clear is 9 over 16. And, and so this altogether gives us 8 over 9 or 0 0.8. So we've gone from uh, the, the, the sort of events that take place inside the space, uh, inside the, uh, the total probability space composed of these four outcomes, things like the uh, raining and uh, the probability of rain, the probability of being clear, the probability of being rainy and clear, uh, to this other uh, thing, this conditional probability, the probability of it raining conditioned on it being clear, the probability it will rain if it's cleared, and we work that out as 0 0.89. And so, uh, you know, that would be, um, if any of these figures were actually uh, properly measured, that would be a good proof of the form and statement. A second example I'm going to uh, consider is taken from the game of 21. So 21, uh, you draw two cards uh, and you get a score. And your, uh, your uh, aim is to get a score that's as close as possible to 21 without going over 21. And the scores go like this, uh, 0 to 9, um, they just take their value. Uh, uh, well, as does 10. The court cards, uh, jack, queen, and king, uh, they also count as 10. And then ace counts, oh, sorry. Um, uh, ace, uh, so this should be 2 to 9. Ace counts as 1 uh, or 11, uh, according to uh, which works best. So if you get an ace, you, can have, you have a choice as to whether to count it as 1 or 11. Let's have, have another go. So um, here we go. So that counts as 8. Now, in fact, um, I said you take two cards, and we're going to consider just the first two cards. Uh, but in the actual game, you can take more cards. And in fact, uh, if you have only eight, you're compelled to take more cards. So now I'm at 18. Uh, at 18, you can either, um, you have the choice of stopping and ending up with a poor uh, card. You're going to compete against the dealer. The dealer will do the same thing that you did. And you get to see, uh, you, you're, you're trying to do get closer to 21 uh, than the dealer, with the caveat that if either you or the dealer gets over 21, uh, they're out. And so uh, I, I, I decide to risk it. I take one more card, 24. And so, uh, so this person is out. Let's try one more time. So here we go again. Uh, ace, that's pretty good. So uh, the ace can be 1 or 11. And then a jack. Well, now that's 21 because the ace can be 11. The jack is a 10. And so that's 21. So that's obviously a great thing to happen. Um, this is what, uh, what you want. Uh, the other great thing to happen is to get five cards and still be over under 21, but we're not dealing with that. So what we're going to ask is, what's the probability um, of, of some of these events? So uh, actually, what we're going to ask is, what's the probability that you get... Um, well, as I said, we're going to restrict ourselves uh, to exactly uh, two cards. And we're going to, first of all, have an event, which is that the first of the two cards is a king. And then the uh, second event we're going to deal with, uh, we'll call it W, is that you get um, uh, 21. And then we're going to ask, well, first of all, we'll work out the probability that you get a king. We'll work out the probability that you get 21 with just two cards. And then we'll ask, what's the probability you get 21 given that the first card is a king? So let's work out the first of those first. Uh, what's the probability that you get a king? Well, one way to look at this, and um, there's probably another more obvious way to look at it, uh, but one way to look at it is that the total number of hands, well, you draw a card, there's 52 of, of those, uh, and then you draw a second card, there's 51 left. Okay, But if you're uh, to draw um, a king first, well, there's four kings you could have drawn, uh, but the other three kings are still in the pack after you've done that, so it's still... Um, uh, over 51. So in other words, the probability that you get a king 
uh, is 1 over 13. And that probably is an easier way to look at it. There's um, 1 in 13 of the cards is a king. So you draw a card, it will be um, a king 1 over 13 times. What about the probability of getting 21? Well, there's basically two ways of getting 21. You can get a court card in the first, uh, king and queen, like so, uh, plus an ace, or you could get an ace and then a jack, uh, queen, or king. So uh, the total number of cards is still 52 by 51. Uh, and then let's do this one first. So, oops. so in this one, your first card is a jack, king, or queen, oh sorry, board of 10, board of 10 there as well. So there's four, um, uh, four possible values and each of them has four suits. There's 16 cards you could have got. Uh, and then the second card has to be an ace. And so there's only uh, four, four possible aces. Uh, and then uh, you could have done the other way around, four by 16 over 52 by 51. Um, and so I guess that gives a 13. That gives a 13, um, and so we end up with uh, 32 over 13 by 51 is the probability uh, that you get a uh, that you get 21. So I'll just go uh, onto another sheet and I'll copy uh, those two probabilities across. So the probability of a king is one over 13. Sorry, the, your first card is king. The probability that uh, you get 21 is uh, 32 over 13 by 51. And what we're interested in, well, first of all, we need the probability uh, that you win, uh, that you get the 21, and your first card is a king. Well, how many ways can you do that? How many points are there in the intersection of 21 and king? Well, that means that the first card has to be a king, and the second card has to be an ace. And again, it's over uh, 52 by 51. So that gives a 13, so it'll be 4 over 13 by 51. So then finally, what's the probability that you get 21 given that the first card is a king? Well, that's going to be equal to the probability um, that you get 21 and the first card is a king divided by the probability of getting a king. So that's going to be equal to um, 4 divided by 13 by 51 all over 1 over 13, which is just going to be 4 over 51. And that kind of makes sense because uh, if the first card is a king, uh, then you're asking, what's the chance that the second card is an ace? The first card is a king, there are 51 cards left, uh, of four of which are aces. So although we've worked it out uh, this way, and of course this formula is, is essential uh, for uh, other and more complicated cases, you could actually get directly to here. Uh, by reasoning uh, much the same way as we did in the last lecture. Uh, in order to get to, to get 21, uh, given, again, uh, in the restriction where we're just asking what happens after two cards, to get 21, given that the first card is a king, is really just a question of asking um, what's the probability that the second card uh, is an ace, given that you've already taken a king out of the pack. In which case, there's still four, four aces left, there are 51 cards left, and you get four over 51. So it all makes sense. Thank you.